Chris, on your left, Todd on your right, number 20 and number 10, respectively, on our Season 4 leaderboard. Both these players with one loss this weekend. So this is a match whoever wins is going to make top eight. Yes, this, yeah. is, this, is a, this is lock someone in right now. Chris Andrew is going to start off with an ornithopter, <laughs> the old school arc pound worker. I'm glad worker is back. Big fan. Just a breeding pool and a passing of the turn here for Todd. Crystal coming across here for one point of damage. Shrapnel blast in hand. The question is, does he have another land? Vault Scourge? And I think the answer is no. Okay. Does Todd have Blighted Agent? I think the answer is yes, and it is. And this is huge for him. Chris picked up a Galvanic Blast, but no red mana. So all he can do is serve across here for two points of damage. He'll gain a little bit of life, but that doesn't matter very much in this matchup. Anderson, another Blighted Agent. That's a windswept teeth. He'll sacrifice that, go down to at least 16, potentially lower. Basic four says he'll stay at 16. I would be surprised. I mean, he could have double ground spell here for the kill. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, might have old Crozier will do it too. Cool, let's play another game. That was really easy. Todd Anderson is going to win game number one here over Chris Anderson. In fact, up a game where we're You better get that backup match yeah, ready. Who, who we got back there? Yeah, I don't know who's on the other side of things, but you better get that ready because this one's not going to take too long. So we'll take a look at the sideboards here between both players. Chris Anderson's going to be on the play. Got run right out of the gym that game. We got two spell skies, two gear power aether grids, a nature's claim, three edge champions, two whip flares, two ancient grudge, and then three cups of spell pierce. A lot of good options here. Yeah, whip flares solid in this matchup. It's not quite lights out because Todd still has Nexus, but uh, it's a very good starting point. I think the two copies of Spell Scatter naturally very good here, and I think the Aether Grid will come in here as well. If Chris is able to set up a board, that's just a lock. Todd's dealing with nothing but one time creature, so uh, Aether Grid could be very good. If Lingering Souls is good against this deck, Aether Grid's got to be good against it's this deck. It's a little bit slower is yep. the issue, but I think it's still worth bringing in. What do we see on Todd's side? Three Nature's Claim, two Twisted Image, a Spell Skite, two Dispels, Ley Lines, Hanktity, Necropede, Two copies of Relic of Patronus, Verdian Corruptor, Pithy Needle, Grafficker's Cage. I think the Pithy Needle, the uh, Verdian Corruptor, the Necropede, Spell Sky, Twisted Images, and Nature's Claims will all come in. Very solid sideboard. Fair enough. We are going to get ready to talk about Patrick Chapin, who deserves a little shine here. Yes. Because he's good in a lot of things and. His books are pretty good, too. Heck of an author. Yeah, Next Level Library available at starcitygames.com slash next level. Two books here available. Next Level Magic to focus on your play and Next Level Deck Building to focus on deck building. For players of all ability levels, available on paperback and ebook right now. Again, at starcitygames.com slash next level. World champion. Pro, pro Tour champion. Two-time world runner. Up. Oh, pardon me. Two-time world runner. Pro Tour champion. Hall of Famer. Recording artist. My favorite one. And... A book writer. And Game my, designer. Oh, forgot about that. Forgot about that. Just a lot of things on the resume for Chapin. And as far as I'm concerned, best writer in Magic. Yes. In terms of quality, volume, longevity, really any metric you want to use. He's been along the lo around the longest, doing it the best. Looking forward to having him back in the booth at some time. No, he's a busy guy, though. Yes. Very much so. So that first game was, that was three turns. Yes. Three turns for Todd. Land came into play tapped, turn okay. two blade agent, turn three kill you. Turn three kill you. Nice. Nice. Just a pretty straightforward, simple draw there. Yeah, Chris, well, Chris kept a pretty speculative hand there. Uh, needed a second land for sure, and probably needed red mana for that hand to be functional. Uh, did not pick up uh, the appropriate land or an opal, and so his hand really didn't do anything. Springleaf Drum may have been a little too slow. There would have been a window for him to draw Springleaf Drum there. Yeah, I think on the, on the second turn of the game, his first draw step, had it been Drum, he also would have been fine. So he had some draws available. He's playing four Glimmer Voids, two Mountains, four Drums, four Opals. Oh, excuse me, only two Drums and then four Opals. So there were some draws to some red mana there. It was a little bit speculative, though. I do agree with you. Yep. I mean, it didn't necessarily have to be red mana for that hand to function uh, because the only red card at the time, I believe, was one copy of Shrapnel Blast. Yeah. But in this matchup, he needs to be able to cast his red spells because that's his only way of, of really interacting besides blocking. And blocking can be tough. Yeah, those red spells are super, super important. So Anderson, I'm going to take a look at his opening hand. Chris, that is. Todd, going to shuffle up, get ready to go here. Affinity versus Infect. Looks like 
people on the old Twitter feel like this is a really, really good matchup for Infect. It's just a little bit too fast. I think things are very different with the number of red cards Chris is bringing to the table. Yeah. And a lot of good sideboard cards. Yep. If he was thought casting and spell piercing and stuff like that, I think that the matchup is pretty bad for Affinity, but he's got a lot of interaction. Yes. You know, if he was able to just kill that Blight Agent on the second turn, for example. Right, if he has a Shrapnel Blast for Blight Agent, his hand could easily be fast enough to win before Todd can reassemble. Yeah. Again, this match, whoever wins it, we'll see him in the elimination rounds later this evening. They'll move on to 12-1 with two rounds left. Even, though, even if they lost twice, they'd be in there. And if, if Chris can make any sort of inroads to slowing down the game, then I think Garapar Aether Grid could be a real piece of the puzzle here. Oh, I think so, too. If he's able to get that online, I can't imagine Todd getting out of it. Yep. It would be very hard. Yeah, we, we've seen Todd be able to bounce around against damage face removal spells before by setting up tricks, but uh, Affinity is going to put him under enough duress where he's gonna, his hand's going to be forced to move faster than he would like to. Blink Moth Nexus, Ornithopter, Arcbound Worker. Pass the turn back. Same start we saw last time. Pendlehaven into Noble Hierarch here for Anderson. For Chris, he picked up a copy of Signal Pest. He'll attack for one. Mox Opal here for Chris. Doesn't look like he has a payoff card. He's got a spell sky. I guess that counts as a payoff card. Here's a Signal Pest. All right. This will be good enough-ish. Well, I, uncontested signal, uh, spell sky, rather, is very hard for Infect to race. Pitting Needle, that's an answer to that problem. Okay. And Blighted Agent, well, okay. Well, Todd's turn was pretty good. Chris? Really could use a Whip Flare right about now. That would be a good time for that. What do you draw? Oh, huh, Glimmer Voids. Well, his hand is kind of forced. I don't really think he has much of a choice. He's got to fire up these Blinkbot Nexuses and just give the beat downs. I, I guess you know, he can... He can feign some strength if he'd like to. I don't know how far that gets him. Yeah, I mean, it's at least worth slowing down here and thinking. At least give Todd some, some pause. Oh, yeah, Spell Sky, get in there. The thing is, at least in my opinion, you got to know who you're playing against. Oh, Todd's just going to push on him? Well, the thing is... Is this your first time watching Todd? Well, the thing is... With the, he has the Nexus is back on defense now to check Todd's copy of Inkmoth Nexus. Sure, but I mean, he's got Blink Moth. I mean, excuse me, he's got Blighted Agent out there. Sure, but you're at least slowing down the clock a little bit. I think that Chris is just trying to give himself an opportunity to draw to something like Whip Flare, Shrapnel Blast, Galvanic Blast, what have you. If he turns this into just a pure race, fires up the Nexuses and attacks with everything, Todd could easily just kill him on the way back this turn or definitely next turn. All right, Ty gonna just get in there with Pendlehaven. Now Whip Flare's gonna be busted if Chris draws it. Uh, maybe not. Todd thought about playing another Blight Agent. Well, Chris would have definitely cast Whip Flare last turn if he had it. So, big top deck here. I believe it was another Mox Opal. Yuck. Nice. So I think Chris has to fire up at least one Nexus this turn, on top of attacking with everything else. I mean, you want to put him on a two-turn clock, right? You just have to, you have to kind of hope. So and if he fires up a Nexus, he gets in for two, three, four, five, six, gets in for six. Other Nexus will make it seven, eight. I think that you, I understand your point about wanting to show some strength here, but I think you just have to fire both Nexus and just say, I can put you on a two-turn clock. The, the issue here is that Todd's missing land drops, so there's no way his hand's nothing. I think you've got to at least hope he messes up. I know, I... I, I, I mean, think, that, doesn't, that doesn't line up for me at all. I mean, again, you're playing against someone who's really good. You hope he messes up. Well, if you, I mean, if you make it on board, if you make it so you're dead on board, then, then you have no hope. Well, I don't think you're making it that you're dead on board when you have, like, a Glimmer Void available. Because if Todd, like, if Todd gets to just play another turn, then what have you even accomplished? 
Uh, well, like, right I, I just want Todd to be dead the next turn if I don't die. And you're getting him to eight, and you're still you're still short next. The turn. nexus would be two more points of damage. Oh, eight seven signal so five. So he goes from fifteen to seven, seven to neg one. But Todd has the option of also blocking with his nexus. He doesn't have to attack with it. This is true. But I think I would be okay, like, if he's blocking with his nexus. I mean, all this is probably just a move point. So yeah, I, think, I, think, I think Chris is just dying this right. turn. Chris is just getting killed. Yeah, he's going to pump here, go there. believe that should be seven in fact exactly. Chris will show a mox opal, and that's going to do it. So Todd Anderson is going to win this match here over Chris Anderson. Two games to zero. Chris not able to draw any interaction in that game. I, I, so he did draw spells, guy. Todd had the answer to it, though. Yes, he had, so. a, he had his needle available for that. So, uh, yeah, Chris, that's the first time that we've watched him play on camera today where he never had any of his payoff cards. I mean, you know, his deck is really about Ravager, it's about Cranial Plating, and it's about Hangerback Walker. In this matchup, Hangerback Walker is probably too slow in most games to make much of a difference. I think it's way too slow, this matchup. And so he's really on Ravager plus Plating. He found no copies of either of those cards, or at least game one. I don't know if he had it, but he couldn't cast it. He was on one land.